This training session is an example of the lessons found in the tutorial of SPC Wizard. In this session we will explain the process capability. When specification or tolerance limits have been set for a product, it is important to know if our processes are capable of producing products which will be consistently within these limits. One of the simplest ways to get a picture of the capability of a process is to superimpose the specification limits on a histogram. Let's do this now. In this process capability training we will use data from the process shown on the screen. This is a launcher firing tennis balls and this machine can run in two states. In the state shown in the screen the process is stable and there are no special causes of variation. In this screen you see that there are different special causes of variation like the increase of temperature, different suppliers of tennis balls, etc. causing the process to become unstable. In Wizard we have created two example data tables, one from the stable process and one from the unstable process. This example data will be used in the training. To open the example data table you click on Database Explorer in the main screen and this window will appear. In this window you select the file Tutorial Data and select the data tables table and click on the Open button. The data table will appear and we can make the data table larger by dragging the edge of the table. To see a histogram of the data we can click on the histogram icon in the main menu. We can make a histogram of the individual values or the subgroup averages. Make sure that in this screen we select individual values. We can now get an instant picture of the spread of the measurements and compare this with the specification limits. In many situations this will be all we really need, but if we want to be more precise we can use special images which have been designed to put process capability into exact numbers. Before we look at the capability images I want to explain about estimated standard deviation. In the previous exercise we looked at standard deviation. This is a figure for how much a set of measurements are spread around the average. The calculations are based on how far each result is from the average. Now we will read about estimated standard deviation. The text for this is available in the histogram information box. To open the histogram information box, click on the letter I in the main menu of the histogram. If we click on the letter I, the information box with all the statistics will appear. To read about the estimated standard deviation, we click in this box on estimated standard deviation. Read this explanation and click on the next button to continue. From the data in the information box we see that the estimated standard deviation and the real standard deviation are similar. But we can also show the difference graphically. To see this difference you have to click on the colored button in the toolbar. The colored zones in this graph show the real standard deviation zones. The green zone is the area between the process average and one time the standard deviation. The yellow zone the area between one and two times the standard deviation and the purple zone the area between 2 and 3 times the standard deviation. The red zone is outside 3 times the standard deviation. To see the estimated standard deviation, click on the small down arrow to the right of the colored button. From the menu you click on estimated standard deviation. On top of this graph you see estimated standard deviation, so this graph shows the estimated standard deviation zones. Now we go back to the real standard deviation. Although it may be difficult to see, the colored zones are changing between the real standard deviation and the estimated standard deviation each time you click. I think you will agree that in this case, estimated standard deviation is very close to the real thing. Now we will look at three of the capability indices of this process. The purpose of all capability indices is to give a figure for how well the spread of the results fit within the specification limits. If the specification limits are well beyond the two tails of the histogram, the process is capable because it should be easy to produce consistently within specification. If the specification limits are sitting on top of parts of the histogram, then we will produce a lot of products which are outside specification so we would say the process is not capable. The CP index is one of the indices in common use.
Now we can read about the CP index from the histogram information box by clicking on the letter CP in this box. Read the explanation carefully and click on the green button to continue. Let's look at how this index changes with different specification limits. We can use the mouse to slowly drag both specification limits outwards until they are well inside the red zones. We have changed the specification lines. Look at the value for the CP. 1.45 clearly indicates that this process can easily produce goods within the new specification limits. Now we will drag the specification lines until they are well within the yellow bands. Look at the value of the CP now. With these specification limits, our process is clearly going to produce a lot of goods out of specification. This is reflected in the value of the CP index. It is clearly less than 1. Now we want to drag the specification limits until they are at the boundary between the red and purple bands. To move them fast, we click on the histogram to bring the specifications back to the original position. The limits are now at 3 times the standard deviation from the average. The value of the CP is 1. This marks the boundary between a process which is capable and one which is not capable of producing within specifications. There is, however, an important point to remember about the CP value. We will now move the specification limits. Watch the capability image as we drag the limits. All of the capability indices change, except the CP index. As you can see in this example, it is possible to produce a large percentage of products out of specification and still have a good CP index. This is because the CP index only compares the distance between the specification limits with the spread of the results. This index does not take into account whether the process is properly centered between the specification limits. We have returned the specification limits to the original position by clicking on the histogram. Now we are going to have a look at the CPK index. The CPK index takes the centering of the process into account. First click on the letter CPK in the histogram information box. Read the information about the CPK index and click on the green next button to continue. When we drag the specification limits to the boundary between the red and the purple zone, like shown in the screen, the CPK index is very similar to the CP index, because the process is exactly centered between the specification limits. Now let's see what happens with the CPK index if we drag one of the specification limits. The value of the CPK remains static when the limit you are dragging is further from the average than the other limit. The moment the limit you are dragging is closer to the average than the other limit, the value of the CPK will start to change. This is because the CPK is calculated using the specification limit which is closest to the average. Because of this, the CPK is an index which takes into account how well the process is centered. We can drag both specification limits at the same time. Let's look what will happen with the CP and the CPK index. What we see is that the CP index does not change when you drag the specification limits, but the CPK index does. It is only possible to get a high value of CPK if the process is reasonably centered. If the process is exactly centered, the CPK index will be equal to the CP index. It is even possible to have a negative value for CPK. Let's take a look when this will happen. While we drag the limits, also take a look at the third capability index, the PPK.
In this graph we see that when the limits are both on the same side of the average, the CPK is negative. You have noticed that the values of the CPK and the PPK index are very similar all of the time. We will explain more about the PPK index later in this training. A histogram tells us a lot about a set of data, but it does not tell us everything. Histograms do not show the time sequence of the measurements. The time sequence is shown in a control chart. To open the control chart, we click on the control chart button on the main panel toolbar. We confirm that the X bar and range chart is selected as the data type and click on OK. When the control chart is visible, we have to check if there are special causes or variation present in this process. We can distinguish between common and special causes by showing the control limits. We can show the control limits by clicking on the control limit button. We want to calculate the limits from all the data in the process, so we change the value in the from box to 1. And click on OK. To make more subgroups visible in the chart, we click on the plus key. To make the display wider, we can drag the right edge of the chart. We can see from this control chart that there are hardly special causes of variation present in this process, and that this set of data is basically stable. So up till now in this lesson, we were looking at data from a stable process. We will return to the histogram and note some figures. We will now record some of the values from the information box on the histogram. Before we are finished with this set of data, we will take a last look at the position of the real specification limits relative to the spread of the histogram. Notice that the specification limits are near the ends of the tails of the histogram. In fact, there is only one point out of specification in the measurements included in the histogram. Now we will look at a different set of data. We click on the Database Explorer button on the main panel and open the data table unstable. We open the control chart as we did before and we put the control limits in. We make more subgroups visible again by clicking on the plus key. This data is showing signs of instability. There are many points outside the control limits and clusters of runs where 8 or more points are on the same side of the average line. This indicates that there are special causes of variation present in this process. So keep in mind for the rest of this exercise that we are looking at data from an unstable process. Now let's look at this data on a histogram. We open the histogram as we did before. We show the histogram information box and the colored zones. Notice that the tails of the histogram spread over the specification limits more than they did with the previous data. The outer specification figure is 12. With the previous data it was 1. So it is clear that this process is performing less well than the process which produced the previous set of data. The colored zones show the real standard deviation. Now let's look at the estimated standard deviation. The colored bands are changing between the real standard deviation and the estimated standard deviation. The real standard deviation bands are much wider than the estimated standard deviation bands. Now we will look at the capability indices with this unstable process. Compare the figures for CP, CPK and PPK in the information box with those values we recorded from the previous data. CP and CPK are very near the figures for the previous process. However, the value for PPK is lower now. Let's look at this in more detail. Click on PPK in the information box. After reading the explanation, click on the next button to continue. You might expect that all the indices would be lower for this process than the previous process. After all, the spread of results is wider now and there are more out of specification points. To understand these indices fully, you have to understand that they were designed to tell us about processes. CP and CPK are capability indices. They tell us what the process will be capable of producing after we have made it fully stable.
The process which produced the present data has special causes of variation, which are making the histogram wider than it could be. Because this process has a CP and CPK of about 1, we can expect to get very few out of specification points after we have removed the special causes of variation. PPK is a performance index. It tells us what the process has produced in the past. For this index it does not matter if the spread of the result was caused by special type variation or common type variation. As we saw with the previous data, for a fully stable process, PPK is approximately equal to CPK.